Okay, guys, so we are live. And so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly uh, referee today, because today we are carrying on with our ongoing campaign. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of uh, stutter in there. That is weird. What just spiked up here? Huh. Um, our ongoing campaign playing uh, Mongoose Publishing's excellent uh, Traveler, uh, second edition. And uh, with me today, oh, and we're playing through uh, their uh, Borderland Run uh, module. This is Reach 5, a modified version at least. Um, and with me today are the stars of the uh, Borderland Run campaign. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing. First up, uh, we've got David. Hi everyone, I'm David. I'm playing Dr. Elias Abdel, a physician and co-owner of the Rift Wanderer and who is looking forward to not having to deal with royalty for a while. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, next up is Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. I'm playing Dane Lovric, a former Imperial Marine Force Commander, but now slumming it on a free trader. What could possibly go wrong? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> next up is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and I play Alonso Santoro. He is a author, journalist, psychic, and troublemaker. Nice. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Carl. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm playing Anker Guvel, who is an ex-Imperial Navy pilot. Um, well, not commissioned officer. He is imperially raised a Varger, the best pilot in the system. Nice. Subsector. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, uh, guys, uh, so um, I guess but for the outset, one other thing I will say is that uh, we, uh, due to some technical issues, we weren't able to do it today, but we will be doing in a either next session or a future, the one after that, um, our year in review. We, we have celebrated the one year anniversary of this campaign now. And as is custom on the channel, we're going to do a, a year in review um, uh, a session where we just uh, chat about the campaign and the game and whatnot. Uh, so I mention that only because if uh, viewers have any questions uh, for the players, uh, for me, um, about the game, the campaign, the characters, whatever, uh, please feel free to leave that in the comment section of the video. Uh, and I will uh, be sure to bring those up to the players uh, when we have our year in review. So, um, but talking about last time and, and uh, Royals, guys, what uh, what happened last session? Because we have finally left the planet of uh, Drinax. Let me bring you on over here. Or perhaps this might be a better reminder. Let me bring our most royal personage back up here yeah there we go and what happened last time guys Oop. well i don't remember the details but i do know we finally got an audience with that guy right there <laughs> king oleb uh, yes after some some more back and forth we did manage to uh cc the king himself um i think we were being tested by meeting his his daughter princess rao a number of times before then um and i, I think we, we failed part of the test but managed to talk our way around it or, or like succeeded enough not to not to fully fail so we we eventually gave her the message from the intercessor instead of handing it to the king directly as we had promised um I, th I think they were looking whether we'd hold firm and not give it to her and insist or take whatever punishment they might think to, to Metty out. But seeing as she had said that she is, is essentially the king and speaks for the king, I think we sort of, uh, at least Dr. Elias compromised by thinking, well, in that case, please have it and, and let's be done with this. And so we were summoned back again. And this time around, uh, King Olap himself was present. I believe one of us noticed that he might actually have been in the room during one of our previous audiences as well, hidden among the rafters, floating silently above us. Mm -hmm. We had a nice chat with, with King Olap. Uh, it was, uh, we weren't really served drinks or, or anything like that, but uh, you know, we got chairs and we got to sit down and have a chat. Mm -hmm. He told us we needed better friends. He was very curious about 
thus getting weapons and other better maneuver drive and such things. Seem to be incredibly well informed uh, about our goings. Mm -hmm. And very curious about what we would do next, but we were we held firm on that one and told him we couldn't possibly tell him and that mm -hmm. if we'd ever work for him we'd give him the same discretion as we are currently giving our current employer. So he seemed okay with that. And said we should we should swing by again on our way back. Yeah. yeah. Once our business was complete. He seemed it seemed like there could be a job on offer. That was our, that was the real sense that it was a bit of a job interview as well. Um and some indication that he might be thinking of a different ship or he was surprised we were using the ship that we were using. Um, you know, he's obviously got a small fleet. We, we've got just some loose change in our pockets, so that's <laughs> probably, probably the answer. But, um, yeah, it seems to me that there's some more, more business to be done there. Mm -hmm. Anything else you recall from your uh, audience with uh, King Oleb? I'm not saying there is anything else. I'm just wondering if there. Uh, anything we recall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That feels like the the bulk of it to my recollection. Okay. Then uh, let's talk about what your plan was for the next step. So right now, uh, you guys were going to be jumping into effectively open space Ooh, one, one more thing we because some of us are getting paranoid we ran a diagnostic to see if there were any tracking devices on the newly installed weapons and such and the good news is there aren't but we realized someone has been accessing our systems before we got to drinax or we can't figure out what they did or who did it just that someone was mm. messing about not not even ultima one was able to tell us who did it mm -hmm. and when exactly it happened. But as far as we can tell, nothing bad has been done to the ship. Yep. Okay. Then, before we dive into what we're doing today, uh, let's start with uh, the way we start all of our travel sessions. Everyone give us a D6 roll and uh, let's see how much luck you have for today. Ooh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. We've been luckier. <laughs> All right, so our here our travelers have elected to play in hard mode today. That's that's uh, good to oh. hear. It's a nice quiet session. Yeah, we just, absolutely. We just chat to each other, play some cards. Definitely. Right? There's absolutely no way that this sector that you're jumping into will be a pirate haven uh, in any no. way. Well, well, it is now, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then, uh, guys, uh, where we left our uh, travelers was, and the crew of the Rift Wanderer was uh, jumping from Drinax. Uh, into um, oh, you know, I forgot. I, I always forget this one book. The the what do you call it? week in in travel uh, random chart. Let me just grab that quickly because I can't remember what the results were. I might be lying about that. I just want that for the second week, but you never know. <laughs> How dangerous can an empty sector of space be? <laughs> <laughs> exactly I'm hoping we find some sort of um, some intelligent new intelligent life form in a space anomaly that would seem, we'll see, we'll see. This, space speaking of space anomaly so I uh, this is a non secondary but I took it uh, so I was a big huge huge fucking Robotech fan when I was a kid that was the that was like my like there was at the time in North America, like GI Joe, Transformers, you know, whatnot. Robotech was my thing, and in retrospect, you know, a film that involves or a show that involves a lot of death and loss probably speaks more to me than one of those other cartoons did. But I, I didn't know anything about the Macross saga, like the actual the uh, Japanese uh, cartoon that it was actually based on, or the first part of it was based on, and. It's fucking wild. Like the the story that goes it with uh, Macross is so fucking cool, and I think probably more interesting than what the story with uh, Robotech ended up being. 
Um, so I'm not saying anything about it because I am stealing a ton of stuff from that for a future session. Um, Graham, myself, and George have been trying to find an excuse to get alternative to the table, and I'm stealing some mm -hmm. ideas from that for right. an alternative session. So, but nice. In any event, it, it sounds if if you are a Robotech fan and you haven't looked into the actual story of uh, the Macross uh, films, the Japanese ones, it's definitely worth a look. It's fucking wild. Um, anyway, the um, so you guys were jumping into. Um, empty space which will give you a week of uh, give or take of uh, time to kill and uh, I don't think there has been a decision yet made as to whether you're going to sink or the world uh, because those are the two destinations that uh, Tila Toro wants to go to before you reach there and that's going to come up in our discussion uh, today it's you know, one of the things that will happen during this week will be that um, I think is it here you're going and then to one of these two or is it here you're going and then one, one of these I two think it's, was it that one 22 55 uh, 55 is it what is it two, two, 22 25 yeah sorry someone's got their stupid arrow in the way triple two five oh. yes okay perfect perfect then uh yeah and that's right that is before you cross into um pirate space too then so that's actually pretty smart um then, uh, or hold on, you know what? None of your jumps would have taken you in tired space. What am I no. talking about? All right, so then um, let's go to the ship itself and we'll talk about the downtime activity. So, is there anything you guys are choosing to do with your time um, before we talk about the, the actual, you know, destination itself or the next destination, I should say? Tinker is continuing to study um, his engineering J drive, going through his training and, you know, the Lucy. modules, the Kaplan modules, you know, yep. for the test. Okay. The <laughs> captain's modules. probably going to give it. The... University of Space Phoenix is making a fucking yeah. bank off of this crew. Yep. <laughs> Hope uh. you got to make sure the captain renews that subscription. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? I want this database access. <laughs> Yes, so so that. Dane, Elias, yep. anything you guys wish to do during this uh, first week of uh, jump travel? Well, I think as always the case for Alonzo after an experience like that is he's recording it all for future, you know, taking notes of what happened so that he can incorporate it into his next novel. Okay. Em embellishing things and planning out the, the storyline. Yep. King of the Hawkmen. <laughs> what about Dane and uh, Dr. Elias? <laughs> so I think Dane probably first at least some of this week and then I'll think about the rest of it, but we'll be continuing with his knife fighting training. He'll be going through a whole range of simulations um, and trying to work on his uh, endurance as well. Okay. Is he uh, training with Tila Toro or is he doing this kind of on the sly? So it's a really good question. And I think if we were to, I think if Dane was to, to train with Tila Toro, he needs to have the conversation. Yeah. And he's not had the conversation. Um, and part of him, given the advice he'd been given already, was that to have the conversation with Tila Toro, he might be able to do that, or it might be more appropriate to do that through acquaintances of Tila Tora that he may well encounter at our next full jump location. Yeah. So I think, I think at the moment he will do it on the sly, but okay. with the intention of speaking to Tila Tora when he feels the matter is opportune and possibly via his acquaintances. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay. Let me just get something set up here. What about, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Elias? I think Dr. Elias will call everyone in for a physical checkup. Seeing as oh. we're on another planet, yep. and it's been a while, that sort of thing. Just, just you know, every day, nothing, nothing too invasive or too intrusive. Um, yep. Just cool. making sure everyone is, is healthy and, and okay. And and uh, assuming Dane Dane agrees, he'll he'll mention that he seems. He's sort of going to ask Dane how he's doing, and will mention that he seems happier after yeah. we've had a chat about having a sort of. 
plan in mind, a destination in mind, uh, maybe a possible future. Mm. Yeah, Dane, Dane will say to you, uh, Doctor, thank you for that. I, I think I may have turned a corner. Um, I'm sleeping better, um, which is good. And I think I think I want to live uh, each day uh, as best as I can. Um, and I'm feeling good about it. And the training actually is giving me just a simple, straightforward focus. So I'm going to stick with this for now. And I'm, I'm kind of sort of coming off the medication, but sort of gradually. Excellent. I'm very glad to hear that. We can certainly adjust your dosage. And yeah, would you? To have a purpose, to have focus, mm, something to, yeah. to look forward to. Yeah, might have a destination in mind. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then um, we'll soon be your intrepid captain is going to do whatever he feels uh, appropriate, which I assume is is uh, the University of Space Phoenix once again. Uh, but uh, what... Okay, so I've got everything set up here, guys. Um, what I... Uh, give me one more second. I want one more thing set up here. Uh, apologies uh, for those listening at home for setting up pages like this. I did have time to get stuff set up, but then I uh, made a last minute change of plans because I'm a dummy. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to do this now. Uh, there's that. All right. There we go. Oop, you coming in? Come on. There you go. I want to make sure when we reveal the space fan dragon that it uh, really <laughs> has the appropriate <laughs> impact. <laughs> so. I'm sure it will. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me put this to back and then we can talk. All right, so I think it will be at one of your, um, you know, one of the meals uh, that you guys have as the uh, as a crew. I think that uh, that seems to be a tradition that started a few months, if not before, a few months back. You may remember that. Um, go. Uh, that uh, Dr. Ilias uh, insisted on cooking a meal for everybody uh, while you guys were on Spurl. You guys had uh, rented that boat at, um, I can't remember, Captain Ganny's suggestion and anchor, I think is the one who's got, you're from a wet world, aren't you? Or you've got at least some experience with sailing? Yeah, I do have like sailing. Yeah, yeah, so then the that would have been, so that, that sort of has become a regular you know, or a quasi regular thing when you guys are on, there's at least one, you know, kind of uh, special meal you guys all have together. And with the uh, things that you guys were able to uh, pick up from, is it uh, Ricondo's Bazaar? Um, then you would have had uh, really a, a something special uh, for uh, for the meal here. A mix of, you know, classic Imperial kind of meals uh, with the Soleimani influence as well as just the exotic stuff that would be influenced by all the myriad cultures uh, that um, Drinex has come in contact with over the centuries. And the things that just happen to be available, you know, at uh, the bazaar. And... Uh, it uh, is in the course of kind of chit-chatting uh, about this stuff that uh, Ultima One uh, will bring up. He doesn't technically require food all that much, but he does enjoy it and he enjoys the company. Uh, so he is happy to, uh, to participate in this. And he says that, um, well, I guess first off, the first thing I wanted to talk about is your two destinations. So the... Two destinations that you're going to really could have, setting aside whatever Tilatoro's interest may be in it, um, they really couldn't be uh, more different in the sense that one is a world with a you know viable atmosphere or at least a non-hostile atmosphere for humans and uh, Varger, uh, and the other is a 
ancient derelict space station. Uh, so the first sink, this is when you are looking in the TAS kind of um, almanac to learn more about it. These are some of the images that would come up to give you an idea of what the region around the inhabited part of Sync would be like. Uh, Sync is a low-tech world that uh, is in the a system containing of th containing three gas giants, a planetoid belt, and three other rocky worlds. It is. Um, Officially designated a garden world, which might imply a temperate and nice place to settle, but most of it is low-lying and damp, um, creating a lot of... Basically, think of um, Scottish weather on a bad day. Uh, that is kind of what sink is is like. Um, wow. the, the I think, with the ex possible exception of uh, the United States, I think Scotland is the one commonality for places where most of the roster has lived at one time or another. Because James is from Scotland originally, uh, David lives in Scotland, I lived in Scotland before, and George has a place in Scotland now. So I, I was born there. Oh, nice! Yeah, there you go! <laughs> and I love Scotland, if that yeah. counts. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So this will be the two running themes are snowy uh, Canada type stuff in Scotland! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. Then we, uh, this is what sync is like. And sync, the most um, sort of notable thing here is there is a bit of an unconventional religious order here um, that makes great, um, makes great pomp and circumstance over dropping things into a lake. Uh, so they make these large kind oh, of yeah. ornate things and they dump them into the lake every now and then. Mm -hmm. The name of the world uh, is technically something else, but uh, Sink is the uh, the name that kind of uh, nickname that attached to it, and the um, it ends up being the, the the name that everyone uses for for the uh, for the planet. It's got a lot of great places to get away, but it doesn't have a lot of. Um, it doesn't have a lot of other things of interest uh, for you. I think the ambient tech level is a seven. Uh, let's see here. And this was one of the places that Tilatoral wanted to go to? Yeah, Tilatoral is, he okay. needs to stop off there. Um, so, so we'll it's talk not like about, just an in and out. It's he's got to do something and then. We'll... Yeah, there's someone he wants to see there, and there's someone he wants to see at the second destination. So that is Sync. Sync is you can expect um, relatively rural. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, things of interest that are there, but it is a you know it's one of those rare places where humans can live quite um, easily mm -hmm. without any kind of you know extra uh, breathing apparatus or any kind of uh, tech. The second place uh, that you are visiting is a place called. The world. And the world is a colossal, There, the, technically it's not the, there is a planet, but the planet is a lifeless, you know, chunk of rock. What really brings people to the world is, and what gives the system its name, is this colossal space station that has generations of people living in it. And the generations of people who live in the world do not know that they live on a space station. Uh, there is only a tiny bit of the space station itself that Outworlders are allowed to visit, but because of the location and whatnot, uh, it becomes a, a pretty handy place to stop off. But you are restricted to where you go. In spite of that, there, it still has become a bit of a, um, a popular destination for folks coming and going uh, in the region. So the even though there's only part of the world that you can access uh, it still is a quite active area and that includes some representatives from the um uh hirat uh, there are aslan there as well you may think that you know a small chunk of a very very large space station is probably going to be less um you know uh, less busy uh, even though sync has such a sparse population and that's does not seem to be the case. Uh, it is a very active uh, area for the part that you can access. Um, 
apart from the rulers of the world do not let anyone have access to those other places, but there's plenty to keep one occupied, at least as much as you can on a giant space station. Um, the part of the station where others come and visit is the most, uh, uh, I guess, like well-maintained would be a polite way of putting it. There's less likely to be catastrophic failures of any kind of key systems there than there are. Um, but what you what TES can kind of tell you to expect is definitely do not try and go into any of the other areas. They are very um, they're very protective over that. And if you don't have concern for your own safety, the other thing that seems to be suggested is the safety of those that are there, because the world setting aside any kind of health issues or whatever else, it's so important to the rulers to keep others in the dark that they might, it would not be uh, unheard of for them to just shut down life support on a part of the station that was infected, you know, with bad knowledge. So, oh, uh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it known why they're kept village style in the dark, or is that so far? No one has any idea. Uh, no one has really made it their concern and because it's such an advanced station uh like to prevent them from just you know spacing all of their people uh if that's what they wanted to do because that's what they have done in past uh it would require a pretty substantial knowledge of a fairly advanced station and anyone who sniffs around too much like that is basically politely told that you can't come back um so uh, is one of those things where if it, if there was more of a vested interest in finding, a, you know, a freeing these people, or if they, there wasn't otherwise like free access to the station um, for those who do want to come come and go, uh, they might press the matter. But without those, you know, motivators, there's probably some people who, you know, wring hands and clutch pearls about it, but don't do anything about it. Interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's a, to give you a context of the two places you'll be traveling, the world and sync. And I'm assuming that you guys have given some look over or looked over these things in TAS and uh, had some uh, discussion or perhaps, you know, drawn your own conclusions. But it's at the meal where Ultima One um, brings up the fact that he's actually had a conversation with Tila's Horrell. And he says, "The has anyone discussed with T. The Toro what he intends or who he intends to meet at the two destinations?" Unless Dane, you've had a chat with him, I don't think we've no. had any confirmation on why we're going or who, how long he plans on staying, or even the order he prefers. In I think originally we had this discuss going to sink and then the world yeah no i haven't i haven't spoken to him about it and um i think maybe we thought it almost impolite to to pry in his business um increasingly though i, I think probably we're kind of all in in this together a little bit so maybe we should inquire have you have you asked him um I, one. It did. Uh, I, I did not ask, but the conversation led to some discussion of what to expect on the two locations. It seems mm. that he has a... I would not call it a retinue, because as an Ihate, he does not have the same standing of a formal court. But you could think of the individuals on the world as such. The supporters he has are to be found there. And what he has suggested is that we can expect a full and a traditional greeting for one of his standing. I thought this would be of interest to you all because if there is some thought 
to intervening on his behalf when we reach Tyok. The forms and customs that will be involved in greeting him and in the meeting with his retinue would be very similar to what you can expect at Tyok, albeit on a smaller scale and one likely with less final consequences. Yeah, that's useful. It se seems that the individual he is meeting on sync is a singular individual. By contrast, he is mm -hmm. meeting a group of individuals on the world who are his supporters, and it seems someone associated with his clan, a single individual on sync. I have not been to sync, but from what I read, it would not surprise me to have a very modest uh, showing or presence by an Aslan clan there. Hmm. I... Interesting. Out of character, uh, does Ultima 1 know that you're psychic, Alonzo? Um, I'm trying to remember if you guys have revealed that. Uh, you know, if he's part of the crew, I, I do think I would have included him in that information. Okay. I don't think I would have kept it secret from him. So he says, um, Mr. S uh, Alonzo. Yes. I don't, I don't profess to have your talents, but if I were to opine on his eagerness to attend either of these locations. It appears he is more excited and nervous to attend the world, and he is, he seems most reluctant to attend at a sink. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Alonso and Dane, you have spent time with Tila Toro. What do you make of that? Do you think there would be reasons for why he might be reluctant to be attending to matters for one individual at sync and mixed emotions? for the world. Uh, so the one individual, oh, I don't know, could it? Could the one individual be someone? Who, in some ways, I, I don't think he's, I don't think it's somebody he fears. I think it's somebody that uh, maybe he respects. He said he his the name off. was- Sorry? When fears being judged by them, or how he will be yeah. received. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's perhaps more a, an honor thing that um, he's returning, uh, having been accused of so many bad things, so many things that are against the Aslan traditions and ways. I did not he... take him no? to be reluctant for that. Oh, okay. He said his name was a Fio Hoi Koalea. And I know you guys have all gone to high school with an a Fio Hoi Koalea, but in the event that they spelled their name differently, I'll just put it in chat for you. Yeah. Is it the is it the is it the northern Trojan Reaches dialect or the <laughs> Exactly <laughs> uh. Here we go. Okay. There's not a reticence then. And um, a Fiohoi Koyalea is a agent for his father's clan. I expect given his uh. location and the distance, he had said 
before that the reason for these stops was for unfinished business, did he not? Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. I mean... Well, could it be that this individual is one of the ones that have caused him the problems that he has? Oh. The fact that it is an individual that he wishes to see here has me considering the role of this individual. Mm. And one of the practicalities Uh, of being so far on the frontier seen from the Hyrit's perspective. Sink is outside of Hyrit space, mm-hmm. and while Tilatoro's clan is influential in comparison to others, it does not have the reach of some of the most influential in the Hyrit. As such, this may represent the very edge of his clan's influence, meaning they have a great deal of autonomy and influence. The Ephiohoi Kovalea. The retinue. He may have more personal matters to attend there in addition to seeking information that might provide context for what he feels is his betrayal. But seeing only one individual on sync and spending the precious time he has before the deadline reaches, it makes me quite suspicious of this one individual. Yeah. Yeah. If it helps as well, here his... Uh... That's the phonetic that I put down. A fire hoy koalea. A fire hoy. Really makes those uh, dragon names from uh, Night Below look a lot more manageable, eh, Jeff? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) A fire hoy koalea. Yeah, that's it. I want to just get that right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, hello, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends okay. on how you wish to. Like your character is obviously like I'm not gonna. If you guys want to call him Effie or whatever, that's completely fine. Uh, your characters would be able to pronounce that, but it's. I don't know. I like doing it. <laughs> it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try and get it right. Yeah. 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 So then, what? Um, what do you guys uh, make of that? If you mm-hmm. ask, uh, if the topic of uh, order of the locations uh, you know, comes up, um, I think Ultima One likely will opine that he will be happy to postpone the tri- sink the the tr- uh, trip to sink to the last thing but that may be the that may be the location where he will require the most assistance from you with one individual unless he just breaks down and confesses to whatever is going on there may be more involved investigations that may be required to try and root out this person's uh culpability for Tilatoro's uh, betrayal yeah that he's going to the world first, but also give us an opportunity to find out more about a Firehoi Koalea from the retinue that's there. Yes. Um, conversely, or not conversely, but if in addition, you may also find you might learn more of Tilia Toro's circumstances. 
seeing how yeah. one's family, friends, and supporters sees one can tell you a great deal about an indivi individual as well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think to a degree we need to do things in the order that feels right to Tia Latora. You know, we need to respect, um, unless he feels pulled to have to do things in a particular way without the flexibility that he might, he might not realise he has, then... I think, again, I have not uh, Alonso's uh, gifts, but were I to guess, I think I know where T. Latoral's suspicions lie mm. for betrayal, and it does not seem that he is eager to find those suspicions proved true. Yes. Yeah, the truth can hurt, can't it? Betrayal is the bitterest of wound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you... Would you prefer some assistance in preparing for the audience to avoid any miscommunications or missteps and in preparation for the audience on Tyok? Yes. Yes. We could all, we'd all benefit from that, yeah. We'll have Thank two you. Weeks. Thank you for offering it. Okay. Of course. I spent many years in uh, the Hyrate, and I have some familiarity with their customs and ways. Good. Good. We shall study well. Then, what other ways do you... How do you wish to approach Tealatoro with this? Would you prefer that I bring it up in our conversation? I expect that when we arrive, he would appreciate your assistance, not only on the world, uh, but also at Sync. Such endeavors benefit from planning. I think knowing his state of mind or suspecting his state of mind, I think he would be reluctant to ask for that assistance. But if it was offered as perhaps a way of thanking him for his assistance on Hilfer, he might graciously welcome any assistance that any of you may offer. And he still operates under the understanding, Dr. Ilias, that your expertise extends beyond the field of physical medicine and into the world of intrigue. I think it's fair to say I've learned a lot since uh, abandoning my science vessel for the Rift Wanderer, but I'm still just mostly a physician. Mostly, I though. I think we should. He mostly, says, yes, and I he guess. toasts you. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe once we <laughs> land in the middle of nowhere, Jim, and ask him, you know, now that we're here and I have to plan our yeah. next jump, where would he prefer going and then bring up if there's anything we can do to assist him as he has helped us? I assume the crew, the crew are all happy with them. Yes, of course. Yeah, but it's, it's putting ourselves slightly on the line. It's entangling us with his fate. And it's a decision that may seem right, but it, it should not be lightly taken. Ultima one nods and says, uh, Dane is not incorrect. And the... Um... 
conflict between the Aslan clans uh, can be most brutal and at times deceptive. Honor um, and right conduct are valued by the Aslan, but like any species I have encountered, there is always nuance and there is always those who happily bend those codes. Which also suggests if his enemies suspect that he may be visiting particularly his retinue on the world, or may suspect that he may be meeting someone on sync. We may expect his enemies, as we come closer to his destination, to take increasingly desperate actions. Outside of the starports, and even in the starports of sync, or the starport of sync, we will not be. These are truly frontier worlds. Mm. We will not have the protection we have enjoyed on Drenax or the armed presence on uh, Hilfer. You may wish to take precautions to ensure for your own safety as well as that of Tilatoro. And Dane, you would be aware of like the degree of um, military tech that likely he's talking about having access to. Like setting aside the kind of rent investigators that you guys have run into thus far that have had an interest in Tila Toral, um, there are also like actual forces they could be sending out. Sure is a handy way of hiding behind your you know, idiot second son by sending them out as a kind of like kick murder yeah. squad, you know, yeah. to, uh, and be like, oh, he's in a hot day and they're just, you know, hot headed and trying to find their own way. Um, I mean, that would be an extremely dishonorable thing to do. Obviously, if you were going <laughs> to declare a war of assassins, you fucking declare a war of assassins, but Hate or the Ronin, like what you ran into on, uh, Drenax, those truly, uh, masterless ones or the ones from the glorious empire lots of ways to hide sending terrifying amounts of aslans with guns and power armor to do your bidding and have no connection back to your own actual clan mm -hmm. again very flexible in their rules of honor at oh, times yeah. yeah yeah when needs must yeah yeah, yeah, which is a long way of saying uh, more simply that, like, on sync, a massive shootout and so, or something like that um, would not be draw yeah. nearly the kind of uh, hell down on you that, like, doing that on Drenax or doing that on Hilfer might do. No. So. Mm. But any other things you guys wish to discuss at uh, your dinner before you arrive in empty space? No, start looking at Aslan ritual etiquette. Let's uh, let's eat round the table as if we're Aslan. Yeah, <laughs> lots of uh, heavily spiced and lightly cooked meat. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it pink, rare? <laughs> Only just deceased. <laughs> yeah, or wriggling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We officially make that uh, reach that point in this campaign, guys, where we're making the exact same joke at the exact same time. So congratulations! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It officially means we've been playing together too much. Yeah. Um, then, uh, so on the world, I'm just checking for that. But mechanically speaking, guys, what um, what you're going to be doing is uh, it will be a um, use of the diplomat. Uh, skill with uh, your society uh, stat modifier or social status I can't remember what it is sock whatever that is yeah social yeah it also suggests that there is specific 
uh, regalia or like outfits that uh, may be appropriate for this that may uh, result in a modifier. Uh, typically, you would not be expected to, to to necessarily know this stuff or have to participate. But if you choose to do so, you'll be judged on your uh, the appropriateness with, by which you have uh, engaged in those rituals. So, you, this is one of the situations where you can keep your mouth shut and not have to worry about <laughs> anything. But there may be benefits to engaging yeah. with it and the commensurate uh, penalties that may come as well. Why don't we do this then? Um, Dane, I think this will be, let me grab my book and fumble around through the skill section. I'll bet you there's a cheat sheet that has a list of all the TAS2 uh, or the uh, Mongoose uh, Traveler 2 uh, skills. No, I should show a little bit. Yeah. Probably just find that rather than doing this, but this is also a nice opportunity to flip through the book. I think, I think, I think it would be. Like, investigate, maybe. Um, there's not really a research skill, right? So. Oh, I see. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of um, what you might roll. The way I'm thinking is uh, we can, we'll treat, you'll roll with a boon because you've got ultimate one's assistance and we'll use this as a task chain modifier for the diplomat role. Right. Uh, and I don't see, like maybe admin as well. So admin or investigation or investigate, probably using intelligence with either of those. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, difficulty will set at uh, an eight, but again, you're gonna roll with a boon as well. Uh, okay, let me just see how I can do this from the sheets. Sure. So let me just pick, pick one of those. Yeah. So I think you can um, set a boon on the sheet. Yeah, and yeah. I think you can change whatever skill you're rolling with. Yeah. Hey, look so at that. I've got so there's right at the top. Yeah. There's yeah, no um there's no skill list on the G on the referee screen, but there is a task chain uh, table, so that's great. Okay. Uh so I would click on that. And there's no modifier. No modifier. Okay, so that's just a straight minus three then. Ooh, for both those skills? Oh yeah. Ooh, okay. So that is an eight, uh, or sorry, six. Do you want to spend some luck? Mm. If you succeed with zero, gives you a plus one to the diplomat thing. If you if you spend two or oh, three luck, it'll give you a plus two on your diplomat roll. Is that okay? Yeah, because if you succeed with an effect of zero, it gives you plus one. If you succeed with an effect of one to five, a plus two. So. Oh, got you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you okay? And let's, if that's okay with people, we'll, we'll spend two points. Is that right, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you will have I... plus two on your, plus one, forgive me, on your uh, diplomat role as you're uh, going through that. Um, Dr. Ilias, Alonso, Anchor, anything further you wish to do in this first week before you drop into empty space? No, I think Dr. Ellis would just check up with Alonso as well to see if there's any lasting effects from his exposure to the intercessor and all that sort of telepathy and psionic and psychic stuff recently, just as a, mm, sort of yeah. a quick follow-up. Sure, give us a, um, what is it, first aid? I think it's... Medic. Medic. Check here, and let's just see what your... So here's an interesting thing, I mean, Given that you were involved in advanced um, uh, genetics and very, you know, innovative kind of long-term breeding programs with the uh, the pharaohs uh, that you had dealt with, the I think that uh, you've learned to 
shore up your expertise when there are areas where you have shortcomings, where you're like, okay, I don't know much about this, but I'm gonna tap into the stuff. I'm assuming that you've done so with Psionics once you reach uh, Drinax, because that would be a place where you would have a great deal of research that, uh, accessible. And with the advanced scanning equipment you've got ex uh, on the ship now, uh, and that added knowledge of it, what you're noticing is there is, I think, um, a combination between what the the information that the um, the Empire, the Imperium shares with respect to Psionics, which is going to be limited and, and probably fairly heavily restricted, and what's accessible by the Zodani. And they have a sort of scale, you know, for measuring the psionic strength. The, it's, I imagine, the Zodani develops separately from humanity, uh, like the um, Soleimani and the, uh, what's the other one, Villani? Villani. Villani and the Soleimani, yeah. So mm -hmm. they've got, they develop separately, so there's a separate sort of scale for that. and. The Zodani one is gonna be a little more precise. And what you've seen is that Alonzo is actually increasing in strength, according to the mm. markers on there. So the, you know, uh, if you take on its face what Alonzo has told you before, that is a part of his abilities that when he learned about it late in life and then he sort of ignored it or uh, pretended it didn't exist, whether he's been, you know, practicing as it were uh, or not, um, mm -hmm. he is definitely seeing physiological markers that suggest his psionic powers or psionic abilities are increasing in strength. Because you bought up your side, didn't you, Jeff? I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I could think Dr. Ellis would have after yeah. running the test, but just to say. But I have some good news, Alonso. It looks like the intercessor's uh, advisor who was critiquing your mental fortitude is, is to be proven wrong. You seem to, whatever happened there, seemed to have given you a growth spurt. And, and see these markers here? You seem to be getting stronger, better. Oh, interesting. But no lasting damage I can see. So it's, it's all good news. Clean bill of health. Well, yeah, if anything, the cigars, it seems as if, if it's... not for the advanced medicine <laughs> would be bad, but uh, if anything, it's almost like the, um, the, the logic behind building, you know, muscle tissue of, uh, you know, you need to damage it so that it can rebuild back stronger. Um, so yeah, I guess Alonzo keep getting migraines and being assaulted psionically. <laughs> well. I had not used it for a very long time, so it's interesting. Alonzo, would you give us a? I think you are more conspiracy minded. Yeah. Than I, I mean, am more conspiracy minded. Anchor is definitely the most conspiracy minded, and experienced. <laughs> So why don't you know Anchor's had very little to say in, in this session. Well, I was going to say maybe this is a conversation so, I'm having with Anchor. Yeah, well, I said, so maybe the the um, you, you know you and Anchor are having a conversation at some point. Otherwise, and you're talking about how like oh I'm getting stronger. And one thing that Anchor might think of is like the stronger you are, the more likely you are to whatever scans that the Imperium uses to try and detect this stuff. If they have those abilities, the stronger you are, the more likely you are to be detected. Yeah. Yeah. We should we should try to look for some psionic shielding stuff i think dr Elias yeah. actually uh, purchased some psionic inhibitor stuff uh, i don't know yes you did that sounds mean but okay <laughs> gets the job done <laughs> <laughs> no but you know like you could you know incorporate it into your your well you don't wear armor usually alonzo but you know well and i think the other way that so alonzo would ask anchor do you think that the intercessor could have done something to me oh i'm sure he did it seemed he's i don't know i just, I just hopefully they people won't think you're a jordani spy yeah the intercessor is a curious um thing too because you may remember like you're not sure what his species is and for a species that you're not familiar with just to be that 
psionically gifted is really extraordinary in this setting. Psionics is, is much more of a low key kind of, you know, beta mm -hmm. level kind of thing in this setting. It's not like, you know, the X-Men, you know, level of, of abilities, but he was definitely much more, um, much more powerful than what, uh, than what you, you know, um, than what the typical psionic um, individual would be capable of. He, he, on that scale, would be uh, definitely at the very, very high end of that, both in terms of raw ability and skill. Maybe maybe they learned something there on how to enhance their psychic powers, and they've applied something to me. Did the intercessor open your third eye? It's mm. also curious, if he was typical of his species and they were that power, that powerful uh, telepathically or sonically, you would think you would have heard of them. So it either means that he is from a species that is from very far away and he has ended up here and that happens. Um, and one is telepathically gifted is what he is likely could have f facilitated that kind of thing. But whether he's an outlier for his species, wherever they are from or not, there is an open question there of who, like how that particular powerful alien psychic found himself on that planet. Yeah, but right. did you ever learn what type of species what his species was? No. Was he mm. look was he look like again? I mean it could be anything though, really. It is, but uh, sentient and um, mm. not si you know civilized is the wrong word for it. But uh, uh, I mean civilized in the sense of having a civilization. Uh, that is a little less um, uncommon, or a little less common, I should say, a little less uncommon. Double negatives led mm. to proof positive. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's it's strange that this particular individual of a species that you don't have any record of and no knowledge of would be able to just mm. show up with such powerful psychic abilities and forge, you know, um, a planetary government, a stable planetary government uh, on this uh, planet. And how long had he been there? He'd been there for a while. Uh, but... f uh, it, I think it was at most like a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was a relatively quick turnaround to get the three. I mean, this place had always operated. Hilfiger had mm -hmm. always operated on, like, you know, competing, effectively competing gangs that would take over and then kind of fall apart and take over and fall apart. But um, the stability that he has brought to that place is sort of unprecedented. But. Um, I mean, it's a it's a big galaxy. Who knows? I mean. Yep. Could be from. You know, and then with the, you know, goes into like the, the talk of, ra you know, random jumps, and you know, you never know how far you're going to go in jump space if it messes up, and maybe from somewhere, who knows where, yep. rim core, yeah, he just showed up. Um, it definitely would, uh, I think, would not be unreasonable given anchors, um past with uh, conspiracies for him to be thinking of it in terms of there's got to be a moving there's a there's a reason for this happening when have you been wrong about those conspiracies before right I'm not saying everyone else would necessarily agree right. with that it could be exactly as Carl has said but anchor himself giving his past experience with um, a number of complex conspiracies that have come to light in his time mm -hmm. it's, this kind of shit, he in his mind may not, or at least it may be that in his mind this doesn't happen by accident. Right, he was probably sent there to, to do something, whether to stabilize the region benevolently or, you know, be a, a thorn in the side of one of the polit polities down in here, or even the Imperium. Mm-hmm. Right, it's Imperi It's like right in between Imperium and high rate space right so yep it's pretty much yes. on the line of the trade route between the two so yeah curious that he uh, also assaulted the one psychic that was in your group as well yeah and then sent you guys on a errand to drinax did you guys mm. ever read that message hmm 
We did not. Huh. <laughs> well, trusting, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's not trusting important. fools. Yes. <laughs> then. Yeah. So anyway, we got to sort of um, sidetrack with that, but I will never pass up a good opportunity to remind you of what's come before. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, unless there's anything else you guys wish to, to talk about, you will be, whew, your first week of travel will conclude with you dropping into the blackness of space. Now, I don't think there's, apart from like refueling, I don't think there's any downtime you need to have. Like, it's not like, some settings where you need to like bleed off energy from your your jump drive right like you can just fuel up and then boom hit it again okay so then yeah. let's <clears throat> excuse me make some checks for your jump and then we'll take our midsection break Ooh, Anna's in favor of that <laughs> okay here we go jump travel so we need astrogation an astrogation check who would like to do that i have astrogation but dr elias might be more educated in a basic astrogation i'm, I'm nope. pretty decent at it i'm happy to help with do it with your help uh, yeah uh, maybe i'll i have a, a plus one i have astrogation zero but uh, oh, yeah, I got plus three in total. Yeah. So you go ahead, Dr. Elias. Yeah, I don't I, think I just I just pilot. Now, yeah, I think it's like a chain anyway. It's like astrogation and then we yeah, jump so that, into engineering. Oh, is that snake eyes? Thankfully not. Thankfully not. Unfortunately <laughs> not. <I think. laughs> yeah, but it's, isn't it like it's like routine or Yeah, it's an easy like it's a four plus uh thing, oh, so okay. Yep, you succeed then. Uh, it is an At easy uh, engineer jump drive uh, check. Yeah, I have engineering zero, so I have a plus four with that. You know, plus, we can't yeah, plus oh, four. So. One thing we talked about last time too, Carl, is that because um, certain of these tasks uh, are going to require specialization, and because just because that's the way the game works, um, uh, we've said while we wouldn't go into combat or role play the characters, if you want to take advantage of like people who aren't here, their characters who have better skills than that, I'm fine with the roles being made with those characters instead. Yeah, so I could say Captain Gani actually has J drive. Exactly. Yeah. We actually yeah, had. I to, just have. I have zero. Yeah, so and Anchor had to make I can the do role. It, but. <laughs> So let's see here. Where is Captain Ganny? And I get if it's a chain, he gets a bo whatever bonus. Uh, it's gives. it's actually not a chain. Oh, I thought it was a chain. Okay. No, no, no. I think because of the gap of time between the two, maybe that's why it isn't. Uh, or maybe there's discrete tasks. Okay, uh, roll twenty in your fucking sticky character sheets. I swear. If you fix nothing else, just <laughs> please fix that one fucking thing. I mean, not that there's a lot of other things wrong right now, so I'm really being <laughs> hyperbolic about this, but still, it is a constant annoyance for years now. All right. No modifier. Boom. There you go, nice. Captain. Oh, nice. What do you mean by sticky character sheets? That they always disappear? Is that no. Like... So, like, if I open up the character sheet and then I move my cursor around, it'll c carry along with the fucking character sheet while it's open. So, if I'm trying to move the character sheet uh -huh. over to one area and then go to the to change, like, whether I'm on the, you know, the chat thing or I'm on the images mm -hmm. or whatnot, it'll drag it along with me. And it's done that in both, like, we've we've tried using, or out of necessity over the last year, we've used Chrome, we've used... Uh, um, uh, Edge, we've used uh, Firefox, and it's the same problem in all of them. So there's a workaround. You can right click on it and then move your mouse, uh, your your thing, but it's a pain in the butt. In any event, it shouldn't have to do that. All right, so then the jump itself is. No, Carl, you're absolutely right. Again, read the last sentence, Madison. Modified by the task chain of the original astrogation check. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a task chain. Cool. Okay, so uh, that would have been Wait, plus. Quick question, a quick intercession. Yeah. We've not actually spoken to Tilatoral about where he wants to go. Oh, right, yeah. So do you want to. Oh, why don't we take a reception jump. break? Come back and we'll have that conversation with Tilatoral because that may lead to Dane, uh, you know, a training montage where he's running through the snow carrying logs. <laughs> and, uh, <you> know. <laughs> in, our hol in our holiday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In the. The cargo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so then, uh, for those who are seeing at home, we'll be back in about uh, five minutes.
Alrighty. Hmm. I always get to break my fast uh, when we take our first break, and it's <laughs> honestly mm. the, <laughs> my favorite part of the fucking day. <laughs> mm. Okay. And then, um, before we go on, to, so I guess how would you, before we um, have the jump, how would you guys uh, like to approach Tila Toro to have this discussion? And uh, am I correct in thinking it would be in the passenger lounge? Oh, Anna thinks the passenger lounge is a good idea. Oh, make that bad idea. Never mind. I right, think so either Dane or Alonzo would be best place to. I don't think we need to have this on on group. Just move of a quick check in, saying we're ready to jump. Any preference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything we should be prepared for when we arrive? Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Passenger lounge sounds good. If that seems best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, I mean, he does make use of the exercise facility as well. So it could be, you could run into him in the, um, uh, in the cargo bay as well. Which yeah, I, th I think is wide open right now too, isn't it? Don't you guys have like just the bladder in there? Yeah, that will be closed away now, won't it? Mm. Uh, the fuel will have been diverted to the main fuel tanks, I guess. Is the bladder disposable, or is it something you can reuse? It's reusable. Oh, nice. So it's a series of collapsible sort of outer tanking. I, th I think that's right. Mm -hmm. No, it makes sense yeah. that it would be reusable, because, I mean, it wouldn't be... You wouldn't slap... So it's not like a fucking plastic bag, you know? It's not a Capri Sun you're transporting. It's highly <laughs> volatile spaceship fuel, so... Uh, I mean, there are drop tanks, but they... Mm. The not the sort of thing that a commercial vessel is likely to use. Yeah, but less less likely anyway. Mm. I thought. So where would you like yeah. to meet up with them? Well, yeah. well, we could we, we could keep it informal and have it in the in the uh, cargo sort of yeah. exercise area, just sort of you know innocent questions while working out or exercising. Yeah. So perhaps he's a uh, bit casual. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so he is he is fi finishing um finishing up his uh exercises uh, when you come down and see him and uh he will see you and uh I think would we'll say I'm almost complete. You're almost complete. I've almost finished. It'll be yours then, Dean. Oh, I see. That's fine. In fact, it's just just for a moment then. Uh, we are just wanted to check in with you just to double check the right uh, coordinates. We're about to do a sort of deep space jump. And so it seemed timely for us just to reaffirm your preferences for the next jump. Um, you can see he's got kind of a, he leaves your eye contact with him, kind of has like a thousand yard stare, you know, <laughs> as he's trying to think. I see. And you wish to know if If we are going to the world or sink. Yes. Mm. Yes, that's right. Um, Aslan emotions, you know, or like how their faces express, you know, emotions is obviously a little different than um, humans, uh, to say the least. But what is sort of universal is the face of someone wrestling with a difficult decision. Mm. So he is looks um uh, may, may I say sorry Tilatori just uh, as you are uh considering the best option for you it is I think wise for us to be clear 
that we are at your service so to speak that we are here to support you actively in any decision that you might take as uh, agents that can operate uh, to your request and command just as we similarly made great use of your services on Hilfer and so to provide some correct recompense for that and for balance we feel that we are in a position to offer ourselves as agents to your cause and so that might in that sense support you making a, a particular decision on whether it be sync or the world knowing that you have that it may be useful to you to make the decision optimally. He nods. I... Sorry, I'm just double checking one thing here. That's right. I was a big pause. So I was looking at. Yeah, this, was just, right, this wasn't my dramatic pause. I'm, I am want okay. to do those. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Wow. Did he freeze up or what? <laughs> now the. My reason for traveling to sink is for the benefit of the clan and to clear some of the shame that I have brought to them. There is an individual highly trusted by my father and our clan. But I think I am confident he may be the agent who betrayed me to our foes. And if I am correct in my suspicions, the sorrow it brings me and my family my clan the value in clearing our name is greater clearing the shame but the sorrow at such a betrayal will be deeply felt by all my father most of all I am not learned in electronic warfare or hacking, but I gather that there are those on the crew who are. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Aslan's name is a Fiohoi Koalea. He is 
the only operative of our clan on sync, meaning he will not have more than one or two devices with which he would transact all the clan business. If one of the crew could access that device, mm -hmm. what proof there is of their betrayal would be there. Mm -hmm. And in a format that would allow me to die to restore family restore the name of the clan to the undamaged place from which I made it fall. If your crew would assist with that, I would be very grateful. I'm sure that is something that we can do, and um, the support that we can give you would not end there. He looks at you. I should say the offer for further assistance. My reason for stopping at the world Those among our kind, I do not know if it is the same among your people, but those born into station often are raised among similar young, similar children. The expectations of our kind and those who support us. It is expected that all stations within the clan will grow and take on their responsibilities together. My place as Ihate was dictated by circumstances of birth. And from a child, those who support me have been there. Those I think your kind thinks how you treat your crew may be a way of understanding what the connection is with the people on the world. These are my oldest family, friends, and supporters. The shame I have brought affects all of them as well. But they remain loyal. We have, my regiment has a saying, which is semper fidelis, always faithful. We are closer, perhaps, than you might think. The appointment on sync 
is one of necessity. Hmm. My obligations of honor. My appointment on the world is necessity. But it is one of gratitude. I have invited Ultima One to join in the... I expect... And you can see it's just... He, the, the fact that these people are going to be doing this for him, it fucking <laughs> kills him. Because <laughs> um, he just, uh, you know, I expect that they will. They will show me the gratitude they feel fitting to my station. Unlike... The greeting and meal put forth on Hurin's claim. Hmm. I would never speak ill of those loyal to the clan for giving what they can. Hernan's claim is far from the Hyret. The world is not. Hmm. If you and your crew would join us for the ceremony and the meal. I would be honored to have you there. We have spoken, and we would be honored to accompany you. He sees that moment that, you know, I think he understands that this is not like a accidental run into now, and he says, <laughs> I see. Then, I think I have lost my appetite for exercise. Mm. The equipment is yours, but you can see the expression on his face has changed once again, and it's now much more melancholy. He says, I should take care, though. Those who place their faith in me previously have paid grievously for that. And he will turn and kind of leave. Mm. You can tell like, that the tension mm. in his shoulders is right back up. Like, mm. um, I think as he makes his way back to his cabin, uh, Alonzo, you might feel a bit of a, like, uh, a hot wave as he goes by, but there isn't the same kind of loss of control that he had mm, previously. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome yeah. to try and stop him, Dane, if you like, but um, he, no, he no, does no. seem to be leaving pretty quickly. No, that's fine. Yeah. Of course. He's got the dramatic timing of a pissed off uh, teenager, so. <laughs> Let him go. Let him go. <laughs> <laughs> He'll calm down. <laughs> <laughs> So then, Dane, do you want uh, do you bring that back to the rest of the crew as well? Yeah, sure. I was obviously share share the conversation and that we were in. <laughs> okay. Then we have a second week of travel, guys, which means Alonzo and Anchor. Would you kindly let me get to the table here? All right, let's start off with uh, Anchor. Give us a D6 roll, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Alonzo, would you give us a D, a Route 66 roll, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 16. Once, yeah. Okay. So, as, uh, let me hear, I'm going to roll randomly here, see who might be affected by this. 
three, Alonzo. <laughs> Lucky you. So Alonzo, tell me about your, or tell us, I should say, about uh, the um, the second week of travel. What are you keeping yourself occupied with? Is it much of the same as you did the first time, or is it uh, something else you want to? Yeah, no. Now I think he's um, he's considering that what they're about to head into is just some really heavy <laughs> stuff. And so he's practicing controlling his um, empathy mm. sort of psychic power because he's concerned that it's going to be a, a rough ride as there's going to be a lot of strong emotion and uh sorry what's their race called aslan the, the aslan uh have particularly strong emotions and tie it to their whole culture and so he's expecting things to be pretty intense for him and so he mm. he is you know <laughs> practicing controlling it and sort of not getting overwhelmed by it mm. okay what about That's Anchor, his plan, anyway. Dane, and Dr. Ilias? What are you guys doing with your second week of travel? Change of tack. So uh, go into maintenance mode on the knife fighting um, and switch to a very, very uh, different form of warfare that Dane is not at all well equipped with. So he's uh, so in sort of metagame terms, he's looking to get uh, diplomacy zero. But in oh, nice. sort of... Okay. So in in kind of game terms, he's thinking, right, uh, there's going to be a ritual element to a lot of these uh, encounters with with Aslan. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't want to mess up too badly. So I'm going to have to understand their forms, their ways, their expectations. Mm. And even if I'm not putting myself forward very much for this, because he won't want to, because he's just not up to it but he will want to not make too many mistakes or not too many horrible mistakes. Okay. So he's going to be taking a, a leave from Ultima One's book. Okay. Quite, quite literally, possibly, and learning some of the ritual forms. I think he will also be starting to think about the ritual of the duel. So he will start to think about what is acceptable. Can he wear Jack? Um, what, what what sort of things should he expect from that mm. overall ritual? So he is at least prepared, not just to fight, but to undertake it in the in the forms and ways that the Aslan would expect. Okay, and I'll do that this week. I'll make a start on that this week. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, do you do you, do you have uh, unspent uh, XP as well? Um. At the end of this session, I will spend my one point. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you know what? If you end up having to make any, uh, I'm fine with you having like with pre-spending that to get the zero, because that okay. makes sense narratively what you'd be doing. So, okay. and I don't think right. right. okay, it, it's yeah. silly to penalize no. you for the. Um, I'd sooner reward preparation than you know uh, narratively building from like shitty results from your dice roll. Well, when you guys it's have... really nice. It's kind of nice because. I think basically Dane sees this as an absolute distraction. I, I don't want to be spending points on diplomacy right now, yeah. but actually, <laughs> actually, really, I, think, I, I think he might have to. So I think that's what he's doing. <laughs> nice, love it. Uh, what about Anchor and uh, Dr. Ilias? Anything you guys wish to do? Anchor is going to go through target practice simulations mm. with the Gauss mm. rifle yep. to improve upon that. Nice. Dane can't be the only combatant in the group. And nice. Cap. Anchor, Anchor does have some skill, but you know, not as good as a Marine. Cap. So you're starting to upgrade it to uh, work on yeah. your marksmanship? Yeah, work on marksmanship. Maybe, sure. you know, go through, go through, find some of these old, uh, you know, infiltration simulations and maybe work on stealth if I have enough. Well, it's also one of the rare opportunities where you're actually able to make use of the, like, the full length of the cargo bay, right? Like, the oh, right. It's totally empty. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. yeah, okay, so Anchor is working on uh, some um, combat drills, effectively. Uh, mm -hmm. What about Dr. Elias? He'll be going through Ultima's etiquette guide to prepare himself for any of the ceremonies or, or dealings with the Aslan, and as per usual, he'll also draw up a 
pathogen profile of both Sink and the world, so he's prepared for any eventualities in case they have strange and unusual diseases or other such uh, so concerns. So one, one interesting thing um, that you could consider um, is you may remember that on uh, Helfer is where you realize that the uh, Aslan who are traveling outside of the Hyret um, often have a, um, like it's, it's a, either like an enzyme or some kind of pill or whatnot that allows them to metabolize uh, certain kinds of meat that is more commonly found in human space than in Aslan space. Um, mm. You are such a genius uh, with um, bioengineering, you might actually be able to come up with like a converse version of that that would allow you to, to at least temporarily metabolize, uh, if not like f take full advantage of it, at least not to get hmm. physically ill from the um, the exotic meats. Because while on Hernan's claim, they were very limited in what they had access to and, and just sort of made do with what they can. This is one jump away from Aslan's space and a pretty significant world. They may have more ready access to native, um, you know, native uh, prey. Yeah, because I think, yes, the Octalis would definitely be interested in that to avoid any embarrassing moments at the ceremony. So I, there are shortly thereafter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rumbly in my tumbly. Uh, would you give us a, uh, gosh, what do you think? Is it bio science? Uh, science or? chemistry or science genetics? Yeah, I, I mm, probably the chemistry more so than chemistry, genetics, yeah. I think, yeah. But you got it. So it may not be, um, you know, I, I wouldn't uh, trust it on long-term things, but for the purpose of one meal, this will make it so you're going to be able to metabolize and eat whatever is available. Wow. Because unlike the, um, the folks on uh, Hernan's claim, they may not... Uh, it may be the, uh, I think I've made this joke before, but it's the fucking, you know, Caesar salad at the keg. It's like, the keg is a steak place in North America. Um, you, uh, if you're not gonna get the steak, you're gonna get the shitty vegetarian option. <laughs> so, this would allow you to actually eat what is available and what's, uh, what's, you know, uh, set as opposed to they're like, oh, there's humans? Um, humans eat mushrooms, right? So, here you go. Uh, then in um, Alonso, it is. Would you give us a D seven roll, please? Yeah, D seven. Okay. Let's break out those DCC dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really should put that on my to do for the end of year. I still have not run a session of DCC at all, like ever. Really? Really. I could and run something. I hear it's a great. Like I've I've heard nothing but great things about it. The we were talking in the Discord today about like games that play differently than they read, and it's always read to me as just fussy. Like it just feels like there's unnecessary uh, rules. But I don't. People have told me yeah. that that's not the case, and that it's just a shit ton of fun. And I've got MCC, which actually really appeals to me. So yep. Yep. maybe I need to run that in the second half of the year. Um, okay, so three. It is about three days in when, uh, Alonso, you are going uh, through the cargo hold. Maybe uh, you've, you've gone to meet, you know, maybe going for the dinner with uh, the rest of the crew, or um, you're going to the, the cockpit for some reason. Um, whatever reason it is that you're heading through the cargo hold. And I'd like you to give us a athletics dexterity check, please. So different specialties for athletics. Um, do you have, I guess, first off, do you have athletics at all? No. So I'll be jack of all trades. So give us a jack of all trades roll. With at, dexterity. With dexterity, yeah, at uh, minus uh, two. Because I think, wait, do you have jack of all trades at one or at two? Uh, Just at one. At one, so give us a minus two. It Nice. So well. you, um, whatever is going through your mind, uh, Alonso, as you're going down, I'll tell you what happens and you can tell us how this plays out. 
what's happened is in the course of emptying the cargo bay uh, for the loading it to the gills, the unloading it, loading to the gills, unloading it, and then having that, that bladder placed in, someone knocked something loose. So there is a pretty heavy metal thing that falls and will nearly hit you. Oh. So why don't you tell us how that planned it? You have fortunately avoided it. Yeah, what? and I probably, I, I imagine that he's like, even like sort of like pacing in there to, you know, like work on his thing and it just, you know, I almost imagine that maybe it is sort of his, like, you know, extrasensory perception that sort of allows him to just sort of just get out of the way more than his actual, like, athletic dexterity. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that he sees it as a, a positive sign that things are going in a good direction here <laughs> with his psychic abilities. <laughs> Okay, so it you step back and it hits the ground, and um, if you audibly <laughs> say that, uh, you know, oh, that's a good sign, I think you would yeah. also see that Ultima 1 happens to be making his way through the barrier and kind of looks at you like... <laughs> curious reaction, Alonso. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Um, well, I've been working on my talents, and... Oh? Yeah, and so I, I don't know. I I wouldn't so much say as I saw it about to fall on me as I felt that it was going to fall on me. I don't know, but have you considered I'm happy to have avoided it? There are pharmacological uh, com um, not components compounds that can bolster psychic ability oh really they're on I they are at times difficult to access but <laughs> if you are seeking to improve your talents and wish to have assistance in expanding those the reach or range of those uh, abilities that could be hmm. an option to see how far you one can reach maybe i should speak with the doctor hmm. were you otherwise headed to dinner uh yeah i will join you perfect so you head on in um it was an accident you guys had uh, rolled a minor accident as the event for this uh leg of the journey Interesting. Mm -hmm. So then, unless there's anything else you guys wish to do, you will arrive in system in the world. Now, let's see here. Did I cut and paste anything? I didn't. Look at that. Hot damn. Just trying to remember what was the most recent thing on the clipboard. And I did not remember incorrectly. Let me just resize the world there mm. and i'll tell you about Whoa. the thing yeah it's a huge uh thing the illustration is not quite correct because it is a um a lifeless rock uh, that it uh, circular uh, circles around but uh otherwise i think it does a good job of conveying the scale complexity and whatnot of the uh mm -hmm. of the place so oh i forgot to grab one book or at least one book. Let's see here. So the starport at the world uh, is an E. Oh, holy shit. It is very advanced, guys. Wow. Yeah. So, but the tech level looks like it's a seven. So it's a, one of those like, you know, uh, one quarter of all the Star Trek episodes where it's advanced tech and a bunch of relatively primitive people living or uh, un-technologically uh, advanced uh, people living there. Mm. Here we go. Okay, Those so... progenitors. Yeah. Okay, so E, Starport, uh, tech level 7. 
Uh, what else here? Law level is what I'm interested in. <laughs> Law level is a one, which means uh, I have terrible news, guys. Um, you know that pocket nuke you wanted to build, bring on board? That is unfortunately <laughs> banned here. Oh, sure. So no, no um, <laughs> pocket nukes, no uh, you know uh, chemical or biological weapons. You cannot wear your battle dress going in. But otherwise, uh, combat armor, portable energy weapons, laser weapons, military weapons, all that shit is permitted on the world. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, mm. this will be a little different than what you guys have come across. In the others, but first, 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 let's see here. Who is feeling lucky? Because we have to roll for your space encounter as you drop into the system. Oh no! <laughs> so get that sandcaster some use. <laughs> Just uh, I'll roll a root sixty-six D6. roll, please. Okay. Might be good. We saw Comet on the way out. You know, another nice. Thing to mm. admire. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, no, no, it's, it has to be a six, and I'll just roll. Oh yeah, yeah, roll, two, roll two, yeah. two sixes. Sorry, roll yeah. two d six. Yeah, yeah. They don't, doesn't understand that. It doesn't Four understand your complex human rolls. Four and a three. All right, so, oh, huh, um, what you? Oh well, there's modifiers. Yay. Okay. And yep. Yeah. Okay. What you pass uh, going, this is interesting. Um, uh, interesting, I say, for this particular region. An X boat courier oh. is what you pass on there. So, this is, if you're not familiar with the setting, the X boat courier is like, it's effectively like. Um, you know, in the Roman Empire, the way that they uh, would allow very quick communication across things, they'd have places with ready riders and fresh horses at certain distances, so you could boom, 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 travel stuff along. That's where the X-Boat Courier is, uh, with incredibly advanced uh, jump drive on it to, I think it's a five, J, uh, so it can cover five parsecs in a single jump, so it's a very quick communication thing. Now, it could be that this, uh, Expo courier is traveling in, uh, you know, going back into position or was in servicing, but they have a very quick maneuver drive and they have a very quick and cap or very long range jump drive. They're designed for fast communication and it's unusual to have one in this part of space. Yeah. Mm. So could be anchor. Anchor will probably say, I knew it. I knew they're Imperial somewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I will say at the time we're recording, um, this certainly has nothing to do with the uh, release this week of the fifth Frontier War product from oh, it's Mongoose really cool. Publishing. <laughs> yeah, I got the. I already ordered it, of course. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, me, uh, me too. It's, uh, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mongo is the only, I think, uh, yeah, it's an easy sell. Even the stuff that is moderately, you know, or peripherally related, I de tend to find there's some useful stuff out of uh, most of the books, even if it's stuff I'm not going to directly. I, I will apologize in advance for the uplifted gorilla that I intend on uh, introducing as a sporting oh, nice. NPC. Because <laughs> I love that in the Soleimani book. Yeah, it's one of the best non sequitur here. If you will indulge me, yeah. so one of my favorite games that I've ever run is uh, Eclipse Phase. Yeah, me too. And, and one of the yeah one of the characters played like a Winst effectively Winston, like a uh, oh nice, uh, a, yeah, a uplifted eight <laughs> yeah, from Overwatch. Has, yeah. yeah, 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 that's awesome. Much. I used the Winston uh, voice. There was in our uh, Champions campaign in uh, the official setting. There's an uplifted uh, gorilla uh, who plays a role in there too, and I used my Winston imitation for for that character too. Um, yeah. the, we're, it's funny, that's the third time uh, Jeff and I were talking about Eclipse Phase on Friday because uh, remember that's the one where we uh, did care gen during the course of play uh, and I was reading Eclipse Phase last night again so that's three mentions of uh, oh, Eclipse wow. Phase 
Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That means that means you have to run it. It's like Beetlejuice. Kind of means that, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's a cool game. I I definitely. I mean, character creation's a little bit bare, but I think after that, it's just like any D one hundred game. I think. Yeah, it's got. You just got to understand your 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 sleeves and you know what you can jump yeah. into and all that kind of stuff. Too. One with the um the, the, the re not only because of the good the fun session we had with it um it, it has I was curious that it was listed as one of the inspirations for the Elder Scrolls RPG which I'm currently oh, obsessed with. And I was trying to figure um, out why, you know, where that was from and I kind of see it now with some mm -hmm. of the uh, th things for how combat works, how uh, dice resolution work cuz the way um dice resolution works in uh Elder Scrolls is different from how it works in Mithras cuz it's Mithras is sort of the chassis that it starts with and then it kind of builds out from there with a bunch of other stuff on it. But um, yeah, and the narrative meta currency is a little closer to Eclipse Phase than it is from either Dark Heresy or Mithras, which are the two primary inspirations for it. But Yeah, we had another great um, character. I don't remember the name, but uh, the, he had like an uplifted octopus. He's Love great. it. Yeah. There's so Jeff's character ended up landing on uh, for his sleeve uh the corvid one the the fucking uplifted oh, bird neat. yeah it was really yeah, cool, it's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so anyway that's our uh diversion to talk about uh eclipse phase. oh yeah the uh, you know your your listeners who are you know contribute to uh children or sos uh children's save save villages yeah right is that right uh, hey, that's a eclipse phase. Is up. Maybe you could uh, vote for that. <laughs> I have a good chance of us getting eclipse phase back to the table. Full stop. Uh, just because I've got, I do have a lot for it, and I do like the setting. I just need to yeah, refamiliarize re myself with the stuff for it. Mm -hmm. um, but the um, but but. To your point, though, you know, oh, I've, I haven't mentioned this on stream, I don't think yet, but one of the ideas I have for our second half of year uh, charity donations is um, the genre mashup stuff. Is yeah. we'll have people take, we'll have classic adventures or kind of basic setup for adventures or whatnot, and people will vote on what games we're going to mash it up with. You know, I've mentioned before how, like, some of one of my favorite sessions was running uh, The Haunting, that classic Call of Cthulhu adventure, but using Green Lanterns. Mm. Um, and there's Ingolf has now, in his second year of doing mashups for all the adventures, he did the Dungeon Magazine issue 23 and ran all the adventures from that using different RPGs. He's I doing that with idea. issue 24 this year, and I'm like, oh, that's a really clever idea. So idea. Clever idea. we do the same mm. thing. So you could have stuff like keep on the borderlands by way of eclipse phase or whatever other mashup. So there's definitely going to be some interesting options for, or hopefully some interesting options for, uh, for mashing those things up. But anyway, that's my digression. My last digression. Anyone else want to take us <laughs> on? <laughs> to this? No? You guys have much more restraint than <laughs> me or Carl do. <laughs> Uh, so then, with uh... focus, he's focused. Evans. <laughs> what? Um, so yeah, you see the uh, the expo. If you hail it beyond just the most uh, cursory of sort of you know back and forth, um, there isn't any other you know there isn't any chit chat with the folks who are on that. Um, but it is an imperial one, which is in keeping with the amount of ships warships in particular that you saw making their way towards the um Hyrat border over the past few months maybe it's not a surprise but probably not a good sign those of you in the in the um with the naval backgrounds in particular uh would have an idea of like that that can't be a good thing <laughs> that mm. is traveling at you know um what is I, i'm gonna look up quickly the J drive. I think it's a five, but maybe I'm thinking of the maneuver drive. Let's see. Um, Expos typically have quite poor, as I recall, quite poor maneuver drives, but tend to max out on the jump. Oh, do they? Because I thought that yeah. they would. You would want to both get into position for the jump as well as, you know. Anna says I'm wrong, so who no, knows? I don't know. It's my just it might be a false memory that, that they tend to sort of go to jump tender stations out system. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't spend their time, almost like waste their time um, going into gravity wells and coming back out again. That makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. So then, oh, so then interestingly, this must be coming from somewhere. 
mm. than two. Mm. So that is that's interesting in and of itself. I wonder if the Navy book has it. And it says quit wasting time. Okay. All right, boss. <laughs> this one of those weird. The the old um, old art was made him look like like teardrops. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is. Here we go. All right. Um, I got high guard out. Uh oh. Slow boat. <laughs> I tell you, those uh, smaller ones, um, the small craft one, that might be my favorite uh, ship source book next to High Guard that they've released oh. so far. Uh, that may have something to do with the bounty hunter ship that's in it, but uh... yeah, that's a cool-looking ship. There's a neat, oh, so there's cool. a weird, there's a weird medical ship on there that looks like a Star Trek phaser. <laughs> oh, really? Like a Type Two phaser. Yeah. <laughs> Expo, here we go. Oh, it's Expo Tender. It's Elvis class Expo Tender. Hmm. Well, I can't. Uh, I can't find it. Expresso, here we go. Yeah, yeah. J uh... Drive Four okay. and. Uh, where's the maneuver drive? Let's see, I have one. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, good, because the tender probably moves it around, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have an M drive. So it must be attached to a tender then. If that's the thing that you're encountering on the way in. That's my... Um, no prize explanation. It's like, if something doesn't make sense, just find a way to make it make sense. I'm sure someone's going to give you a comment on how exploits work. Uh, Expo is a thrust one, so typically. So, okay. yeah, so there we go. So it would be um, yeah. being brought out. I mean, so it may not be, like, urgently going somewhere, but the fact that they're trying to put one in place in this system, maybe that's in and of itself enough to be a cause for concern. But hmm. in any event, so um, that is what's happening. There's an, a tender that is, which looks honestly like a like an Atari cassette <laughs> uh, that is moving this uh, teardrop shaped yeah, yeah, thing. Oh, um, so, um, but it will not be long until you reach uh, the world. So, what uh, preparations, if and oh, we have one other important thing to do. Mm. Who is feeling? Lucky. Mm. I, th I think the uh, Sionis should roll. Yeah, I am feeling a little lucky today, okay. which is not normal for got, roll 20. He almost got hit by uh, some falling debris. and survived. Yeah, it rolled it really well. Okay. So what do you want? So I'm, I'm just checking. Uh, give me one second. I'm just checking your... I need to calculate up your misdirection uh, index. Remember I said that there is in the adventure a in uh, mechanic for how you guys fuck around, how indirect you guys go? That is this. No pressure. Mm. Okay. Actually, Vassalan's lead is just waiting for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, fuck! They shoot, they blow up the tender. <laughs> yeah. Now we have to defend the honor of, of the Imperial Mail Service. <laughs> okay you're weeping as you're repeating the slogan from the u.s postal service that's a pretty good sized ship man it's the 1100 ton ship oh wow <laughs> yeah i'm looking at like an old mega travel i mean it's funny like expo i'm looking at old mega traveler adventure book it has the expo tender plans oh nice which i don't think I it just... changed no, I doubt it. It's yeah. like early adventures, so you know. That's great stuff. I actually nice. looked. If it wasn't so, there was a time where I, I had a bunch of that from what your comments, Carl. I had a bunch of it in my Noble Knight cart. Uh, digest pulled... group. Sorry. The digest group stuff. No, no, the um, the original, uh, the GDW stuff. Because there's some stuff the the the, air, the setting for it seems uh, interesting. So there's a couple of adventures in there that looked pretty cool. Oh, Mega Traveler? For Mega Traveler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, the Rebellion era is kind of cool. I've, I always like that era. 
era. Mm. Um, so new one of my favorite adventures since you're looking stuff up. Yeah. So I did I did run a scenario set at you know so in the fiction the Emperor Strafan is assassinated by some dude. Uh, someone will probably some uh, one of the sector archdukes so can't remember his name mm -hmm. but um so i had a i had there was oslan characters there were scout characters the imperial marine characters because the, the oslan diplomat was also uh, killed because he tried to jump in front to protect oh. the, 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 the princess yeah yeah so then like i have all these do so it's like a one-shot scenario to get out of you know try to stop the assassination get out of the imperial palace but they're all like I just want to do something in battle armor. So there were all these guys and Oslan and 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 humans and battle armor, and mm -hmm. we, we were fighting in the palace, and people were you know getting hit with grenades and grenade from grenade launchers and plasma guns, and it was fun. That's awesome. The cool, the coolest. I think the coolest story arc, and that was like the scout. He happened to be at the at one of the right places at the right time, mm -hmm. and actually, so there was like a, another. And during that assassination, there was another murder that took place on that day. And he was like there when it happened. So then the, so now he would be, if we had continued a campaign, he would have been like chased all over the Imperium because of this knowledge. That, oh, jeez. Kind of all but right. It's fun. It fun to do that. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like one. And the, yeah, like, look, I like the idea of the, when things are breaking down, uh, yeah. it's an interesting time to set stuff. Um, not to, you know, foreshadow too heavily here, but. Uh, Alonzo, <laughs> go ahead and give us a 2d6 roll, please. No, no, not again. All right, here we go. This one will be good. This one will be, you find lovely maidens. Okay. I don't think uh, you're going to hear, also my knuckles don't crack, but I don't think you'll hear me cracking my knuckles, but you can use your imagination that I've done so having seen that result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. So. <laughs> so the DM smiles, it's already too late. <laughs> oh, this could be expensive. All right. So you guys are arriving at the world. Um, mm -hmm. And it says good luck. What. Um, have you given thought as to. You're going to have to leave uh, the, the ship with. Oh, I should take over your entire crew as well to this place because um, I'm assuming that uh, you're taking on the risk of bringing uh, Teal Toral off the ship with you. Are you intent mm -hmm. on bringing Ultima One with you as well? You may remember that he did, uh, Teal Toral did invite Ultima One to this and Ultima One said he accepted well, yeah, in that case, yeah. 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 I guess, of course, you know, that risks exposure for mm -hmm. Ultima 1. But... It does. Uh... But, but, you know, if we have the backing of the King of Drinax, I think we're cool. We're cool. Yeah. Um, it is... Um, that's true. Put him there. I'll put is him there. Is there a way to disguise Ultima 1 a bit? Uh, or might... like a robe or cloak or something or a hat to... to... <laughs> you, know, you know what? I heard Scarra, this, thick I heard this, look, 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 you can't look. Just like some glasses. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. A baseball cap or something. <laughs> the Clark it, Kent in. technique. A baseball, yeah, baseball yeah. cap yeah. and some, some, some glasses. Yeah. So it or is. Jedi ropes with hoods. Yeah, and like it would not be unusual to have, um, you know, space. There's all sorts of different cultures that are travel, so there would be a. A, a cloak really might be the best bet uh, for for Ultima One um, because uh, while it isn't owned by them, Judico has a um, an operating a facility uh, on the world. <laughs> Judico, what's the dude? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so why don't we um, let's see here. Who's got, uh, or is going to be giving us a streetwise role? Mm. That'll be, I, I can't remember if there is an actual disguise skill. Uh, there's not, which is great, because, yeah. <laughs> that would be, I feel, fairly niche. Um, streetwise uh, would be... There is deception. Sorry? There is deception. There is deception. 
which has got disguised as kind of a... Oh, does it have disguise? Yeah, yeah. So if anyone well, else... It, 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 it suggests itself. Yeah, I think yeah. deception or uh, streetwise. Yeah. Um, I do have both. Okay. Hey, woo, disguise nice. is probably the one that's more... Or deception is probably the one that's more on point. Yeah. I have, I'm pretty good at deception, surprisingly. Nice. Yeah, good. Well, you guys want to work well, got, together and yeah, do it. Yeah, someone yeah, yeah. roll the boon? I got a plus. I have a plus two total. Nice. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So okay. So go ahead, along. You're you're the one who said you felt lucky. I'll help out. Okay. <laughs> so get, roll with a boon then, Alonso. Okay. All right. Click it's like the boon. Scooby, it's like Scooby and Shaggy here. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's very much like that. <laughs> It really is. Uh, Alonzo smokes a lot of uh, questionable substances, and Anchor <laughs> has canine heritage. So yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> we're probably like, are... looking through looking through our closets, like throwing stuff all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Pull so up glasses and ball caps, and you've got throws. a great disguise uh, for for him. And be, you know, the the low law level is really going to help here because there's not going to be like careful scans or careful logs of who's coming and going oh, yeah, necessarily i love it um so i mean we can gonna... go like we can go like fully armed can't we yeah yeah oh yeah armored if we need to if do most i guess before we leave we can take a look at the starport and see if people are look are, are all geared up if, i would suspect they might be and then go geared up yeah, like people, um, they're not like, there aren't gunfights going on, but it is not unusual for people to be wearing, you know, armor and carrying military grade weapons. Okay. Uh, not yeah, everywhere. I think we should do that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So let's uh, head over because I think this is a pretty cool thing. Oop. Was at my door. Oh, it's kids. I just gave all my bottles to kids yesterday, so these kids get nothing. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. It fits with my. Uh, I'd rather be lucky than smart. I was trying to figure out how I was going to fit all my recycling into the bin, and then kids showed up and took all my <laughs> bottles. So you know. nice. All right, I'm just going to move this down here, and then we'll place our people on here. Here you go, guys. Boom. All right. So, oh. as you, well, maybe I'll move over to Scooch so you can see. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Go. Um. All right. So you can, yeah, basically bring whatever you know, whatever stuff you want on board here, and it is a very uh, active. Um, thing whatever you're going to be experiencing on sync if it is as remote as what the tas guide suggests this is the opposite of that there's a ton of fucking people uh in the common area of the um of the of the world um what you would know as well is there is going to be a proper like first meeting between tila toro and his um his retinue or his uh, his friends and as you guys are coming off, I imagine you've communicated to um, or allowed uh, to the Toro to communicate to them and let them know that he would be arriving. What you guys find is a group of, it's around 12 uh, Aslan who are waiting. And as you guys are landing in the, you can picture the, I picture this is sort of the level of chaos in some of the uh, dock areas. Once you get out of the mm -hmm. actual, you know, the the port where you have uh, the docking bay where you've landed, and what you can find is there is a group of Aslan uh, there who seem to be carrying a something with them. Um, this is where I rely on my Chekhov's pocket nuke. Uh, that I referenced. <laughs> no, uh, what um, what they have is a set of uh, very ornate robes. Mm. Now, Ultima One, I think at this point, when the you know sort of the side goes down and you leave the ship and you're entering into here, uh, he will lean into you, Dane, and say, "It might be best if Tila Toro goes first. Oh, of course. 
Yes, I'll, 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 I'll mention it to the crew and just say, uh, let our Aslan, Aslan colleague lead. So he steps through and what you find is a very uh, vigorous welcome at first. And they are all kind of cheering, you know, when he comes, he first walks out. Um, he looks deeply uncomfortable with it. He kind of pauses yeah. for a moment and then comes out <laughs> and he... Uh, why doesn't everyone give us a recon check too, please? Or hold on, there's actually, I think... I think, I think, I think there's a different skill. There's like um, an insight or... Assess. I thought there was like a um, a skill that we've stumbled. Is it investigate? Upon. Yeah, for judging. Right, Keen observation. Yeah, yeah. You can use investigate or recon for this, guys, and intelligence. Okay. Oh, Alonso, you're rolling with a boom. Uh, oh. I turned it off oh. again. Did you? Okay. Oh. I didn't know oh, that, that was your deception. Sorry. sorry, sorry, I'm a dummy. I, I it's not a crit, but I see Ooh. it. Oof. Oh boy. Well, fortunately, other <laughs> They're going to attack him, look out! <laughs> <laughs> uh, too late. Oh, oh, Hank, oh, I did run out. I yeah, you rolled snake yeah. eyes. I rolled snake eyes, yeah. This, I don't think, will have a consequence to it. Um, but Dr. Ilias, there's something curious that you pick up. So... I mean, I think the amount of Aslan you've been around are probably uh, quite, uh, for a regular basis, uh, at least fairly limited. But you can see that between um, Tilatoral and one of the, oh, wrong button, Madison. Let me see, did I remember? I think I remembered to lo load this. Let me show you here. Um, there's an Aslan woman uh, who he is uh, meeting with. Oh, I didn't load it. Nope. Um, whose uh, illustration we'll have to wait till next time. <laughs> but you would judge. If I was a younger person, um, uh, I, well, no, I think there is, you would say that there's something between the two of them. Mm. Like there's definitely that kind of, he is very grateful to see all of them and, you know, greets all of them quite warmly, uh, even more so than what you saw when he was greeting the people at, uh, the people at Hernan's claim, in retrospect, he seemed like he was being very polite, but likely was in a very bad place. This is maybe a combination of him being in a better place, and also these are people who he is genuinely close to, who he genuinely grew up with. But even amongst that, there's one uh, Aslan woman who he seems to be... Both of them seem to, like, hold, you know, um, their uh, physical contact a little longer. They seem to be, you know, eyes are going back to, to them. And then once he does his initial, you know, greetings with them, they... Um, they open up a case and they refer to him I mean they're speaking in um, uh, in the uh, Aslan tongue and Ultima 1 will lean in to sort of provide the you know subtitles as it were for, for them um, he says that um, they refer to him they refer to Tila Toro as their lord and then they open up this ceremonial case, this wooden case, and within there are formal robes and regalia. And Ultima One leans in and says, these are those that would befit the son of a clan lord. And they are quite impressive. Um, mm. They load, uh, 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 place them over his uh, shoulders. They put the regalia, the stuff around his neck, around his uh, wrists, and very quickly he is transformed from kind of the, you know, um, on-the-run kind of uh, vagabond uh, that uh, you had met into someone who would 
quite easily fit uh, comfortably in King Oleb's court. You can see that having come to know him better, uh, Dane and Alonzo, both of you would recognize that he seems even more so than uh, when you met him on Hernan's claim at that dinner, he was carrying himself with his station, um, but he seemed, I don't know, um, he seemed to be like kind of barely, to going through the motions as if there was not, you know, a, a drive for him to do so when the they were showering him with praise. You may remember the daughter was particularly fond of him. These people, it's, there is a deference and a level of affection from them that is very different from the others. And he seems equally, he is upholding the station, but he seems deeply uncomfortable with it. Mm, like, he, it's like adulation. Oh, these people absolutely love him picture like the best you know family reunion at an airport escalator and that's what these people are are showing him um he is his initial reaction seemed to be to reciprocate in kind he seemed very glad to see them in particular and his eyes do uh dr liz keep going back to this one woman and you are introduced to a number of them, uh, but I will not uh, burden you guys with a bunch of uh, uh, Aslan names that um, the, you may not remember, apart from this one, because her name is Elahase, and I'll put that in chat. He introduces you all, and you are all invited uh, for the feast. Exciting. Yeah. They explain that they have arranged for, uh, the world has different places that are set aside for uh, visitors to stay. So you are uh, have been invited to um, sustain one of them. They have prepared a, a place for you. Um, you see that there is a bit of, they didn't quite realize that he was going to be bringing all of you with him. So they're making, they say it'll just to be a moment or so, or some time before those are uh, ready. But they seem very excited to, to see him. Uh, they're going to escort him and you to the... Um, to the uh, to where they you know uh, where they're staying so they can prep their meal and then they'll have this feast a little later. But is there anything you guys wish to do before um, joining them at their quarters? This place is a very high tech uh, area, and the low law level suggests that there's probably a lot of stuff you can find. I think you guys may have done all the commerce you wish to already. Mm -hmm. Dr. Alias will hand out the chemical compound to help us deal with any of the food we are about to be served. We'll explain how it sort of works and it's like a one, one time, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. After and we'll that we good. Be safe. It's actually for Varger and humans as well. Yay. Okay. So... Well, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I wonder how. I wonder how close the diet would be. Uh, I, like the 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 high content of meat would be the same, but like all the different like little bits of whatever their equivalent of like amino acids and yeah, whatever yeah. is in there, okay. it would just be. I imagine that would be different. Um, and I think the aren't the Varger on like the far end of kind of like. You know, their core, yeah, their core word is supposed to. I mean, they're not that far galactically, relatively speaking, yeah. but they're like on the other sides of other opposite sides, core versus rim. Of, and I bet you, if Imperium. you boiled it down to your biological uh, fundamentals, are probably closer to humans than they are. Oh Aslan, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, because they're some they're Somali, uh, so, Terran uplifts. Yeah, yeah. Right? 
So then, um, yeah, so so those pills. hand those things out and you guys begin making your way along. And as you guys are making your way through, I think in the bottom left, the bottom right gives you an idea of sort of what the, the type of places you're passing through are. The world uh, was not designed for this chunk of it to necessarily be um, used for outworlders, right? Like the world was built for some other purpose for the people who live here. So there's a lot of sort of like making use of whatever whatever available space there is or repurposing parts of it. And there's a ton of people kind of moving back and forth. And it's going to be that very uneven kind of, you know, there's not like these clean, straight corridors you might see in... You know, some sci-fi stuff, this is all built up on top of one another and there's turns and there's, you know, uh, buildings that are built in the middle of large hangars. Uh, and it is as you're making your way through here that I think uh, two things happen. For one, Dr. Ilias, I don't want you to fear that you are falling into a role that someone else has pressed you into. <laughs> but maybe you're getting quite good at detecting when people are engaging in espionage because as you're taking in, you hand out the, the tablets and you guys begin making your way through. You can picture that Teal Toral's a little further forward with his big robe on with all his uh, retinue with him. You guys are hanging back and making your way along through this massive of things um, and you can pick out that there are at least two individuals uh, oh, let me find stats because I want to not get their species wrong hmm there are at least two humans who at first glance, you thought that, um, you thought really nothing of them, but uh, maybe whatever Anchor said about the, you know, conspiracies and whatnot, you just got yourself on edge for this. There are definitely two humans who have been following you. They are definitely each armed because they have double checked when they thought that you weren't looking, the location of something underneath their, you know, kind of overalls uh, yeah. on at least two occasions. And from the way that they are doing that clumsy thing of placing a hand up, they are communicating with someone else. As sure as you are of a diagnosis of a common illness, you are certain that you are moving towards an ambush. And this is the kind of place where um, restraint uh, is not necessary. In that case, Dr. Elias will step up next to Dane. And he, he hates doing it. It's not it. He'll set off Dane, I guess. It's just like... <laughs> oh, yeah. he'll, he'll just say something like, because he's been around soldiers, he doesn't know like a full lingo, but he'll just say something, you know, Dane on your, whatever it would be like on your 12, on your 6. Those two individuals, I think, were about to be ambushed. Dane, what was your recon roll? Seven, do you want to retroactively spend one point of luck? That would be lovely if that would be okay. Okay. I, I didn't canvas with you guys whether you wanted to spend that or not. So looking back over there, yeah, you can see them. There are two moving along, and the way they are moving through the crowd, um, not your area of expertise, but they definitely have fucking military training. Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of do um, a quick... Oh, why don't you... Uh, is it tactics? Yep. Why don't you give us a tactics... I can't remember if there's a specialty for small unit, but uh, if there is... Uh, there's tech, well, it's pet, it's sort of tactics ground, tactics space. So Ta I've got ground. Ground, yeah. Tactics ground. Okay. Fuck, Ooh, yeah. Nice. All right, so you are confident that um, you're... You know, when, when uh, Dr. Ilias mentions that, you're sort of 
you know, play over where you've gone thus far and sort of where you're coming towards. The next area you're gonna move through is a fairly wide open plaza for the looks of things. Uh, it, it probably was a, a hangar or some other kind of large, you know, empty area that has been repurposed where there's a bunch of, you know, um, stalls, bazaars, stuff like that. This is gonna be a place where if you were to w wanting to spring an okay. ambush to be sure to capture or kill someone, sure, you just know in your bones this is the place. Okay, so what I would do at this, at this juncture, I think, is if this if this works, if I think this will work, is to tell everyone stop right here, do not move any further. We are we are we are about to be under attack. Turn round. Are you telling Teal Toral then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you stop um, and step. You kind of grab him because they're probably walking a little bit ahead. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Okay. So, so you stop, stop him. You see. Stop um, assassination, and I, I turn. I turn round at this point. I point my gun at one of the two um, that are coming with with, with with the wires, and I blow one of their heads off. That <laughs> is going to be an excellent way to start our next session. <laughs> so. <laughs> For those listening uh, at home, thank you so much for amazing. joining us for session 25. <laughs> Fucking great cliffhanger. <laughs> Anna agrees. Here we go. Then, oh, we may, guys, we may have our first actual battle mat fight in Traveler in this campaign <laughs> next time. I got a bunch of cool, I think for other reasons, I had to get a bunch of cool uh, sci-fi maps. So we may have a fun map fight next time. Nice. <laughs> Um, so for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for session 24. 24? Oh yeah, 20. Yeah. Uh, when I was looking at the playlist, it, the reason wow. I'm thinking 25 because when I was checking the date of our first session, that was Care Gen, which didn't count as session one. So we have 25 sessions and uh, this is session 24. Anyway, okay. um, that was an unnecessary bit of trivia. Uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our most recent session of the Borderland Run campaign. As is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, there's also a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, and we have a channel there dedicated for this campaign, as well as most of the campaigns we've run on the channel. There's some great traveler chat that's been going on over on that channel, too about uh, some recent releases and plans people have for their own traveler campaigns um in addition to that there's uh channels over there for most other games that we run on the channel as well as most of our campaigns uh so you are more than welcome to join us over there uh, there's also great gm chat and uh gosh uh tabletop discussions convention chat um it's really a great community that has built up over the years over there, and you are more than welcome to join us. There's also a link down below to um, our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have a great selection of new role-playing games, board games, and card games, they have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs. Um, if they do not have something in stock in their extensive collection uh, then or catalog, then uh, you can put it on a want list and they will send you an email when it comes in. And um, if you make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code MUSERWINTER. It's listed in the description of the video. And if you're listening to this after April 15, 2024, come back to one of our more recent videos and we will have the current discount code listed there. Mm -hmm. There is also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages, and that is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, an incredible organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children. Uh, you can learn all about the areas where they're active by following that link, and if you make a donation through there, all, that will go directly to them. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman, just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And as a way of saying thank you, right now, now, we have a uh, voting going on on the Charity Initiatives channel on the Dungeon Musings Discord server for our two Star Wars charity sessions from uh, May the 4th. May the 4th, we'll be playing two sessions. Voting is going on right now. And we have a four-way tie between the four options that are listed there. Uh, each week in April, people will be voting for what era we're playing in. And we have can uh, canonical and non-canonical options there. Then we're voting starting on Monday for what heroes we'll be playing. Then the week afterwards, what villains. And the final week, what game we'll be playing that with. 
top two wins will be the ones we use to make those two sessions. So if you have donated $25 or more since January 1st, 2024, head on over there and cast a vote for that. And then for the second half of the year, the first half of the year, we've been running uh, charity sessions for the donors from last year. Starting on uh, around May, uh, July, we'll be running charity sessions that the donors will be voting on. And it'll be something in the form of uh, mashups that I mentioned there, where we'll take uh, classic adventures or adventure setups and we'll mash them up with other games and run something unique for you. Um, in addition, uh, there is, uh, as a reminder, next session we might be playing, uh, continuing on from where we are, but as soon as we have our next full crew, we will be doing our one year or year one retrospective. So if you have any questions for the crew uh, or myself about the game, the characters, the campaign, anything like that, uh, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll bring those up for the players. Uh, or you can uh, leave that on the Discord server as well, the D Dungeon Musings Discord server, although the players probably probably will answer those there. Um, so whichever way you want to get it to me, I'll try and make sure I, I have all of those at hand when we do have our year in review. And speaking of our stalwart crew, the last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our stalwart crew for joining us again today. So David, Graham, Jeffrey, and Carl, thank you so much for playing today. And uh, I saw the photos of the current state of James's computer. James, we wish you luck with your repair rules. We still have <laughs> four luck for you to draw on. So good luck with that. <laughs> We'll be back one way or another with the crew of the Rift Wanderer in two weeks' time. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes are encountering on the world. Uh, and until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. Mm -hmm.